the complete evolution of whales. It all started 50 million years ago. That distant time was a haven for mammals. There were no dinosaurs for almost 15 million years and nothing prevented mammals from living as masters of the earth and slowly evolving. These are the descendants of land mammals, cetaceans. Unlike fish, whose spine bends in a horizontal plane when swimming, in cetaceans it moves in a vertical plane. Modern whales and dolphins cannot live on land and look very unusual compared to land mammals. How did land animals turn into sea monsters? Now you will understand everything. Mesonychians were considered to be the distant ancestors of cetaceans, extinct predators. These animals looked like giant dogs, with small hooves on their paws instead of claws. Mesonychia were quite diverse. Some animals were the size of cats. Other Mesonychia could reach the size of a large bear. Among these creatures, semi-aquatic fish-eating forms are also known, Hapilodects. However, most Mesonychia were terrestrial predators and scavengers. The structure of the skull and teeth of these ancient mammals has long given reason to believe that cetaceans descended directly from Mesonychians. The the next stage of evolution turned Hapilodex into a new species of animals called Endocheus. This animal belongs to the order Artiodactyls. In its build and size it resembled not whales at all, but modern deer from the Tragulid family. Tragulids lived in West Africa and Southeast Asia. The habitats of these animals were quite diverse. These were dense forests and scrub and mangroves. Tragulids could swim and dive well. Indohyus was extremely similar to these animals both in appearance and in characteristic features. These are Archaeocetes, primitive Eocene cetaceans. Ancient whales, Archaeocetes were divided into five families. These are Pachycetids, Ambulocetids, Remingtonocetids, Protocetids, and Basilosaurids. Pachycetids lived in the early Eocene about 52 million years ago, on the northern coast of the subtropical inland Tetha Sea. These were large-headed and long-muzzled animals with hooves on their toes and long tails. Pachycetus and Nalocetus retimidus were similar in size to a wolf, and Ichthyolestes pinfoldi looked like a fox. Pachycetids swam well using wave-like body movements, However, the ears of Pachycetids were adapted to perceive sounds in the air, rather than in the aquatic environment. These animals lived on land, foraging in and around shallow freshwater bodies, much like modern tapirs. Skeletons of Pachycetids have been found in Pakistan and northwestern India, in river sediments. Apparently, these places were the center of origin of cetaceans, then Ambuloca paradidus natans, swimming walking whale. An almost complete skeleton of this animal was found in northern Pakistan in sediments dating back about 49 million years ago. The appearance of the 3-meter Ambulocetus resembled a large-headed crocodile. When swimming, the body of the ancient animal bent in a vertical plane, like that of modern whales, seals and otters. Ambulocetes hunted like crocodiles, lying in wait for their victims in shallow water. These animals could not run on land. Ambulocetes had powerful jaws and teeth and were capable of killing fairly large prey. The structure of the nose allowed the amphibian whale to swallow food directly in the water. The animal could hunt both in salt waters and in fresh water bodies. The ambulocetid family includes two more genera. These are Gandacasia and Hymaleocetus. Smaller relatives of Ambulocetids were Remingtonocetids. These animals had highly elongated jaws and were somewhat better adapted for underwater swimming than Ambulocetids. If we compare amphibian whales in general appearance with crocodiles, then Ambulocetids more closely resembled alligators, and Remingtonocetids resembled gharials. 
six genera of Remingtonocetids are known. The sizes of these animals were small. For example, the cock hitset or Cuchicetus minimus was not larger than the river otter. For Andrusiphius or Andrusiphius slowani, the presence of a powerful flattened tail has been established, which served as the main organ of movement in the aquatic environment. Rainist or Rainist's afer, found in the Middle Eocene of Egypt, demonstrates that Remingtonocetids reached the southern coast of Tethys. Protocetids, who lived 40 million years ago from shallow waters, moved to real depths. These animals developed an elongated, powerful tail, which enabled them to swim quickly. At the same time, Protocetids retained developed hind limbs. The way of life of these ancient whales can be compared with modern large pinnipeds. Protocetids had small teeth, and therefore these predators swallowed prey whole. These were the first cetaceans that managed to spread beyond the teeth of sea. The largest of the protocetids reached lengths of over 3 meters or 10 feet and weighed up to 500 kilograms or 1,100 pounds. The most famous ancient whales. These are Protocetus and Rhodocetus. Macrocetus bidens looked peculiar, which had a short proboscis that could be used for collecting mollusks and other animals from the bottom. Maocetes. Male Maocetes were larger than females and had more powerful fangs. The first truly giant whales, Basilosaurids. These animals lived in the late Eocene, approximately 40 million years ago. Basilosaurs were distributed throughout the world. Representatives of the Basilosauridae subfamily were huge. The serpentine body of Basilosaurus reached a mass of up to 6 tons or 13,000 pounds. The length of a large representative of Basilosaurus could be up to 20 meters 6, 6 feet. Dorodontins. These Basilosaurus were dolphin-like in appearance, weighing 1.5 tons or 3,000 pounds and reaching lengths of up to 6 meters or 20 feet. Despite their external resemblance to modern cetaceans, Basilosaurids were not capable of ultrasonic echolocation and acoustic communication. The relatively small brain indicates that Basilosauridae lacked the complex social behavior found in modern whales and dolphins. The largest archaeocete and the largest mammal of its time. This is a Basilosaurus or Basilosaurus cetoids. The structure of the spine of Basilosaurus suggests that when swimming the animal could wriggle like a snake. Most likely, Basilosaurus was not capable of long swimming and deep diving. The animal also could not go onto land. Basilosaurus hunted large prey. For example, on sharks and dorodontins. Eight years ago, a complete skeleton of an 18-meter Basilosaurus with the remains of another whale inside was found in Egypt. If you look at the inside of the body of a modern whale, you can find real hind limbs. These body parts have not disappeared from whales, but are hidden inside and serve to attach the muscles of the genital organs. Modern groups of cetaceans. These are the Tuthidodontocetae and the Balenomystocetae. These whale species appeared in the late Eocene, about 40 million years ago. A sharp increase in the brain in toothed whales is observed twice. Initially in the earliest forms 40 million years ago and then in dolphins 15 million years ago. The suborder of toothed whales includes dolphins, narwhals, porpoises, and sperm whales. Most of these species live in the oceans. Coastal, polar, tropical, and oceanic species are known. All of them are active predators, catching fish and squid or, like killer whales, hunting other cetaceans, as well as penguins and pinnipeds. Unlike modern baleen whales, odonocetes have teeth and are capable of echolocation. Modern baleen whales have lost their teeth, but have acquired baleen, which they use to filter large volumes of small prey. Baleen whales are the largest animal creation in history. This is a blue whale. Cotalacromacei.
This is an Oligocene toothed whale from the extinct family of Xenorophids that lived off the coast of South Carolina 28 million years ago. And this is Uranodelphus. The toothless end of the upper jaw of this animal turned into a long process that served as a deadly weapon, like a swordfish. This sword-beaked dolphin was small, just about 2 meters or 6 and a half feet. But the related Macrodelphinus collagi reached killer whale sizes of 8 meters or 25 feet, representatives of the genus Squalodon from the family of shark-toothed dolphins Squalodontidae had long, narrow jaws. Numerous species of the Kentriodontid family resembled modern delphinid dolphins in appearance, which appeared about 15 million years ago. Cymocetus ray, separated into an independent family of cymocetids, received the name snub-nosed dolphin. The short jaws of Cymocetus were noticeably curved downwards, and the sparsely spaced teeth served more for sifting food than for tearing. The two-meter-long porpoise Semirostrum cerudii, which lived three million years ago, had a lower jaw twice as long as its upper jaw. This part of the body was used as a special sensitive organ to search for food by touch in muddy water at the very bottom. The history of the Platanistoidea group of river dolphins can be traced back to the late Oligocene, when representatives of this species still lived in marine basins. It turns out that these animals were not related to each other at all. The blind gangetic dolphin Platanista belongs to a lineage of archaic, toothed whales related to squalodontids. But the Amazonian Aenea, the Laplatan Pontoporia, and the Lake Lipotes come from different extinct groups. The most unusual appearance among the extinct toothed whales was Odobenistops from the Pliocene. The fossil animal was named by this name due to its external resemblance to the modern walrus. Odobenistops can be translated as walrus-headed whale. It is a small dolphin placed in its own family, Odobenocetopsidae, related to narwhals and porpoises. Like the walrus, Odobenistops fed on benthic invertebrates, collecting them with its large, fleshy upper lip with sensitive vibrissae. The tusks were not used for obtaining food, but served as mating weapons for males. About 20 million years ago, sperm whales Phazeteroidea appeared. They are specialized squid hunters. Some neogene sperm whales were the killer whales of their time, occupying the ecological niche of killer whales about 3 million years ago. Zygophyseter veruli. This whale appeared 10 million years ago. The animal was 7 meters or 23 feet long with a powerful skull and numerous large teeth in the upper and lower jaws. Two more killer sperm whales, the 7-meter Brigmophyseter shigensis and Acrophyseter, which reached only 4 meters in length, but also occupied the niche of active sea hunters. The giant killer sperm whale Liviate Melvillii reached 18 meters or 59 feet and weighed about 40 tons or 40,000 pounds, approximately like the males of a modern sperm whale. It can be assumed that the appearance of such large predators was associated with the development of gigantism among baleen whales. Baleen whales evolved from Archaeocetes, apparently at high latitudes. The toothy Jangocetus hunderi is very unusual. Jangocetus was an active predator that hunted large fish, including sharks, and was ecologically similar to the leopard seal. Mamelodons. Ancient animals had sparsely set teeth. Mamelodons fed on bottom-dwelling invertebrates by filtering mud. Filter-feeding baleen whales evolved from precisely these forms and species. Darwin called ink strainers. In the mid-Oligocene, about 30 million years ago, filter-feeding baleen whales appeared. Ancient right whales roamed the oceans 23 million years ago. The Balanopteridae, which include the giant blue whale, appeared in the North Atlantic about 12 million years ago. Balanoptera sibaldina was not inferior in size to the blue whale. Cytotherium. This was a very diverse group of small whales. More than 50 species and about 20 genera. 
Cetotheriums were hunted by killer sperm whales, as well as giant megalodon sharks. Cetaceans gradually mastered the world ocean, giving rise to a huge variety of forms of very diverse appearance and size. Cetaceans have become one of the few groups of mammals with a well-reconstructed evolutionary history. Undoubtedly, new studies of fossil and modern species in the near future will significantly complement and detail the emerging picture. Thank you for watching this episode. Give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And also click on the bell so you don't miss new and interesting episodes from the Real Unreal channel.